Hello and welcome friends! Frenzy here, bringing you more Kerbal Space Program 1.0. Testing, testing, testing. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and test out. I think this will probably be, I kind of looked at this as being a mini-series, um, so this will probably be the final, the final, uh, testing video that I do, and I'm gonna kind of really move over to doing some career stuff. Um, yeah, I... I wanted to test the resource system because it is big, it's complex, it's detailed, and it's probably the most fun I've had in Kerbal Space Program 1.0 thus far because it is really cool. Um, in case you didn't get a chance to go like watch KSP TV during the whole release uh, craziness, it is very complex. The guy who basically worked on it was a modder, Rover Dude, if you're not familiar with him, uh, and he's worked on a lot of different mods and things like that, like Regolith. I believe uh, and he's awesome and he was talking about it in the stream and so I learned a lot from him and I'm hopefully gonna pass on some of that knowledge to you uh, the way that I'm doing this is basically kind of the way that he suggested and there's probably simpler ways you could do this but I thought it was a really fun way to do it you know kind of add some depth kind of uh, so it's kind of in three parts this first part as you can see here I have basically a scanner so what you do here is you go to the moon, as I am, and then you get yourself a polar orbit that I believe is above 60 kilometers. Um, I think that's accurate. Uh, it should tell you. And then you basically you just deploy and it instantly does it. And there's some people that were saying, well, you know, why doesn't it like, you know, kind of like uh, scan sad and carbonite and things like that. Why don't you just, why does it, you know, you go around, you actually have to go and map it all out. Um, and I think the whole argument for that, and this makes sense to me, is because then people would just time warp and it would be done. So why not just have it to be done instantly? And that makes sense to me. So we're scanning here. We're performing our orbital scan. One thing I should point out that you absolutely must positively do, please do this, is bring an antenna. So this actually gives some really good use for antennas again. Uh, so you need an antenna to be able to do this, to do this scan. And then you can see we have a wonderful color here, um, and you can adjust it. You can also adjust it if you actually select the moon, which at the time I was doing this, I didn't realize that until a little bit later, I think. But you can adjust the colors, so you can get a heat map, you can have different, you know, different things. They have options for, you know, uh, colorblind, which I think is a really cool move. So there's a lot of different options we have here. Um... You can, you can adjust the cutoff rate. So you could say, I only want, you know, areas to be shown that are 70% higher in ore. You know, whatever that rating is. Um, and you can see that I did that with this heat map. And so red, red is what you want if you're using, I think, I think it's like the color gradient, the heat map, I think it was called. Uh, so you want red. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and send up our second uh, launch here. So you can see the big old fairing on the top there and the cool smoke. So this is going to be our second launch. So we first thing we did is you got to get that orbital scanner. It's kind of like the clamshell scanner, a lot of people call it. Uh, so that scans the planet. That is step one. That's the first thing you're going to want to do. Uh, the second thing you're going to want to do after that is, I mean, there are different ways to do this, but I think it sounded pretty cool to me. So I wanted to do this. Is you go and you send a rover. And if you get really creative with this, you get the rover is actually pretty useful, um, particularly if you're if you land like an area where there's two biomes, because I believe the surface scanner, which is what the rover has on it, I believe that has um, it works that it, it'll show you the entire it'll give you like a really accurate detailed representation of um, the ore in that. Um, biome. So I think it's for the entire biome. So if you land it near like two biomes, you can take the rover and go to the other one and get like a bigger picture, more accurate picture, which is really cool. And I just want to show the separation because it just looks cool. <laughs> uh, you can see there I have my rover. I kind of put it on a sky crane, not that it was at all necessary, but eh, it was fun. I think it's actually kind of beneficial to do kind of a sky crane insertion. Um, kind of simplifies the, the rover design, at least for me. So we're going to go ahead and try that. We'll see how it turns out. Um, again, trying to get my orbits in a way, as you can see here, where I'm landing, and that's the red, because that's what we want. We want the big spots. Apparently, craters, from what it sounds like, are really good. Um, and you can see now I finally have the moon selected, so I can kind of show you, you know, some of the options that are on the menu there when you go to the map mode, which is really cool. And we're burning downwards, only getting ready to put our rover on the ground. Um, getting ready for separation... Just a minute here. Gotta burn a little bit. Burn, kill some of that speed. I probably had enough fuel just to put it down this way, but that sounds fun. I want to use my sky crane because it was cool. <laughs> uh, there we go. 
coming down. Oh, look at that. It's so scenic. I love getting down into these craters. It just looks cool. All right. We've staged. We're now on the sky crane. Uh, you'll see here me. I did it. I'm rookie mistake by me. Don't put anything that obstructs your thrust because that'll mess up your vehicle. So I had to kind of isolate uh, myself to two engines here. Fortunately, this thing had enough, more than enough thrust. Um, so that's always a plus, right? And we're coming in for touchdown. And we're away. <laughs> oh man, I love the <laughs> This thing just face plants after it's done. I probably could have done that a lot more uh, epically, but I kind of like that. That was very Kerbal of me. So we have our rover. We're driving around on the surface here. I also put a narrowband scanner on there. Not totally necessary. The narrowband scanner, which I'll talk about a little bit more, is more useful when you're actually coming in to kind of do your your official landing or, you know, when you're bringing your actual tools to do some refining. And so you see I did there and I got a more accurate picture. Um, so when I do bring in the narrowband scanner, it'll tell me the really accurate values there. You can see me when I put my mouse cursor there, uh, it goes, it really gives you like the accurate representation of ore so you can maximize what you're doing. <laughs> this thing was kind of ugly. Um, this is my refinery kind of thing that, you know, build that I came up with. Um, it's not pretty, the fairing. It, it looks like a giant arrow. So could be worse. Could look at other things, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll keep it PG. But, you know, we're going to send this thing up. And so this is kind of my rig, my kind of refining rig. And this I have the narrowband scanner on. Um, and we'll talk that a little bit more as we get closer. I always like to show launches because, I don't know, launches are cool. Um, you're kind of, you guys are probably used to more of a fast pace on my videos. But uh, when I do career, it'll probably be a little bit slower pace because I like to show launches for the most part. So we'll, we'll do that. And we're going up here. Having a little bit of fun getting this thing we're going to get ready for separation here in just a moment as these uh, big old boosters. And I did put Sepatrons on here, so it'll be an interesting um, separation. Boop. Yeah, turn on. I always turn off the engine. It's a good way to do it if you forget to Sepatrons or if you don't have Sepatrons. Just cut your engine for a second. That usually keeps you from blowing up. <laughs> Take it from me. I know from experience. Yeah, so you can see on this thing... Um, or you'll see here in just a minute, you know, this is my refining rig. Man, this thing looks, I just like the way it looks. To me, it actually looks like a, like a refining rig. Like, it looks just gritty and kind of cool looking, I thought. And you see the narrowband scanner there on the top and many, many solar panels, which we'll, we'll talk about in just a second. There's a reason for that. Um, and so we're coming in here. Um, I know where I need to land generally because I have that rover down there. So that is a plus. So we're going to go ahead and make this, do this maneuver real quickly here. Just kind of get ourselves uh, set up. And when I built this rocket, I actually thought to myself, well, I have way too much fuel. This is overpowered for getting to moon, things like that. But turned out I used almost every single last bit of it. And I really do suggest bringing a lot of fuel here. Because you see the narrowband scanner, um, you can hit refresh and it'll update, you know, the deposit which you're under. So if you mouse over, it'll show you the abundance of ore in your area. So if you're good, and I had a lot of fun trying to land this thing. Uh, not that it was necessarily hard or anything like that, but I was really trying to maximize, get to the best spot for ore that I could find. And so I was moving around, I was scanning, I was updating. So this is a really cool game mechanic. I cannot wait to see some of this stuff. I can only imagine what it would be like on Duna, you know, where we have a little bit of atmosphere, things like that too, so... Really, really cool um, for the most part. I've really enjoyed doing this. Yes, and bring an engineer. Thanks for reminding me, video. Um, engineers will actually help you, I believe, extract resources. I think they keep the temperatures down. They do something towards that, from what I understood uh, from Rover Dead. And you get to see the cool particle effects, uh, the dust blowing up here. And we landed. So, uh, yeah, I uh, may have quick saved a couple times after I crashed. But nonetheless, you only get to see the good stuff, right? Uh, so we activate the uh, the solar panels. So that's what we're doing. Um, and I almost made a mistake here. Um, this is going to slow down a little bit too, guys. I know you guys probably used to me kind of going all over the place and just cutting everywhere. But I thought this would be kind of thing, something that you'd want to see was me kind of going through the process of what it's like to actually uh, mine. And from my understanding, there's a lot of mechanics going on here. Uh, there's heat. Heat is the first thing that you kind of have to be careful of. If you're not careful, you will overheat your rig. And it does throttle, and it, from my, what I understand, it throttles itself, Rover Dude said. The guy who made this, who uh, implemented this into the game. So it'll throttle itself down when it starts to overheat. 
but you want to maximize your thermal mass around that center part there. That's called the ISRU. So this actually converts the resources. So you want things like fuel tanks near it. You want things um, like you see I have the ore container below it because they have high thermal mass. And that's exactly what you want because this apparently it radiates heat. It actually radiates heat. And if you're not aware of space, um, unlike in the atmosphere, you know, space is, you know, heat is a major issue. And so trying to get rid of that heat is a big factor. Um, the reason I have all these solar panels is now they actually act um, kind of like, I don't want to say low grade, but they almost act like radiators. Uh, so they have some ability to kind of dissipate the heat. And that is really cool. So bring lots of solar panels because that'll help cool you, keep you cool. Uh, make sure you have some, you know, fuel tanks around your um, ISRU because that'll dissipate, you know, with thermal mass and things like that. And we're drilling, we're drilling. So that's pretty cool. You can see ore is actually filling up. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> this was, really was some of the most fun I've had um, in KSP. So when I do my career, I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this. And it, I think it's perfect. The way they did this is perfect. It's because it's not easy to do this. Um, this took a lot of effort, a lot of, you saw it took three launches, and yeah, I probably could have done it in one if I built something big and crazy, but, you know, it's tough. And, you know, managing heat, um, having an engineer who's good enough to kind of manage the heat, you know, these are all things that are absolutely 100% critical. Uh, so we're, we're mining here, the ore, kind of having a little bit of fun with that. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of cool things that go into this, and it was very complex, and I'm trying my best to convey it to you. Uh, it's not necessarily the most easiest thing to kind of understand, even for me particularly. Um, it seemed very mathematical, and math is not my thing. But, we, you can see here, we're getting a good chunk of ore going, which is absolutely 100% what we want. Um, and from what I understand, you can time warp up to 100, like times 100, and it'll function properly. But I think if you go beyond that, and I was a little bit unclear, but if you go beyond that, it can have some funny things. Um, but you can go in time warp. If you go somewhere else and you do a lot of time warping, when you come back, it'll essentially do the calculation for how much ore was um, needed, and it'll factor in heating and things like that. So if it overheats, it'll throttle itself down. So there's a lot going on in the background here. Um, and I'm very happy I got to hear Rover Dude talk about it because I would have no idea what was actually going on if I hadn't seen that. So we passed quite a bit of time here, and we'll go back and we will see if our tank is full. It is! Yay! So that's awesome. So we have a full tank of ore. Now, what are we going to do with it? Convert it! So that's what you do. I should point out here, do not run your drill. I repeat, do not run your drill while you're converting fuel, because apparently that will make your heat spike. that will overheat things. This will slow down this process. So shut down your drilling and then use the ISR or U converter. That's what you want to do. Um, in addition, one thing I should point out too is make sure um, you're only, you can actually do multiple. Uh, so I could do like liquid oxygen, um, liquid fuel, and monopropellant at the same time if I wanted to. Don't do that. That'll double the heat from what I think. I think that's how it works. I think you double the heat. Um, but you can see here, very slowly, we're ticking up. We're getting liquid fuel. We're replenishing our supply. And that is awesome. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, though, is this ISRU, I think it's like four tons. It is ridiculously heavy. So I personally don't think when I'm doing this that I'll have kind of a landing craft. Say I'm like biome hopping, trying to get science. I think I would probably have maybe a second craft that I would use that I would kind of like maybe use to come back to something like this. Um, and I think I would take the fuel out because it is, it is very heavy to carry this thing around with you. Um, you'll see my Delta V, I think, at the end when it's actually full. It ends up being something around like 700, which is not much. It's not much at all. So, and some of that has to do with the fact that you can actually purge the ore out of your... your um, uh, your ore, like your container there. So you can get rid of it. And ore is twice as dense as liquid fuel. So that's that's heavy. So that's something to consider too. Um, so we're converting here, we time warp, and voila, we are full on liquid fuel. So that's really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're doing good here. And then I go ahead and make some monopropellant. So you could do monopropellant, liquid fuel, oxidizer. You cannot do xenon, but I think that's okay. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea because xenon on its own is, it's very, you can get a lot of Delta V just with a couple of tanks of xenon. And we have new tanks for xenon too. 
All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed. Um, I'm just kind of going through and showing you the thermal debug colors so you can see things are burning up. Again, hopefully you enjoy. Please like tap that like button. I would really appreciate it if you would. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm going to be starting a career mode soon. I'll probably throw in a couple mods, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe. Tell your friends as well. Hey, drop some comments. Tell me what you guys want to see. Tell me what you think. And I will see you next time.